All right, guys, so I got this thing primed. It's jacking this up, taking a look at this. Shot some primer on all this. See how it looks. Yeah, you can see the spot wells and stuff. A little high spot there I'm gonna have to knock down. And then all around here, the spot wells. First I gotta get, gotta guide coat it and check it, make sure I didn't get any dings in it and then fill all the spot welds not much work to do to that should be easy to get that one ready to paint not much work to do there but i got to figure out these door situation i figured you guys are probably wondering whether i'm going to get these things to fit so i started to cut the dog leg off i got it through some of the spot welds there i'm gonna take the wheel off here i'll take a look at it and see and see if it will go on I know what's going to go on. It's just how much work it's going to take. A lot of interest in this stuff uh, on the door, I noticed. Because I just got that video released today. Uh, this is a week probably after you guys saw that video. So I think I'll have this on the Monday video. But I've already got Friday's already done. So how's the door window? Did you get the... the uh, nose yep it's already been down a week now so anyway but i have to kind of stay ahead of it because i've got repairs going on the other cars and i got a little bit of a weather situation let's take a look yeah we had some wind here uh, a couple of branches fell off this tree the almost the whole tree almost the size of that one fell down out front in the neighbor's house almost every tree in the neighborhood we had about a couple of 80 mile an hour gusts came through here uh, for about 10 minutes or so and then it was it's calmed down quite a bit since then first it was the heat now it's the wind didn't really have much of a window in there to get much done but anyway we'll keep going on this thing i'm gonna get this little panel on too figure that floor piece on there all right so let's get busy Okay, for lack of being able to film underneath there, um, I did get the dog leg cut loose again. So you can kind of see it's loose in the front and the back. Oh, the front's already off too. So anyway, just kind of dangling there. But anyway, I pull it up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it up, line it up, where it should be, line up the door, okay? Then I'm going to see if I can tweak this thing in place. Um, I did get a little bit of adjustment out of the front, just playing with it. If you guys noticed, the hinges weren't quite tight, stuff like that. I just wasn't, I just was placing it on. I wouldn't, I hadn't really got it all the way on yet. I haven't yet. Here. I got to tighten these up. Let's tighten those up a little bit. And I'll start playing with it. I kind of tell you what I did. Maybe I'll, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do that's going to work. So I'll just kind of explain it to you as I do it a little bit. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the dog leg. I think the door is at the right height. Let me look. Hang on. All right. So I did confirm that this line up here, I'm sure it's in frame. Well, uh, this line up here is right, and that's what we want to go by the belt line. Make sure that it's about, you know, like I said, it's in my acceptable range. Now, 
Um, of course, you know the dog leg needs to come up. It needs to be about right, right there. So, okay, but I don't know what how much I'm gonna move it when I do my first tweak. I can do it while it's up here. I'm gonna need leverage. I gotta get down. I'll put the wheel back on. All right, let's try this again. Get our leverage here. Hold on, actually. That's what I did. Oh man, I can't even get a tweak on this one. These are really stiff doors. As I said, Gerson's metal is like super stiff. I have to rethink this a little bit. Usually I can grab them and twist them. <laughs> this thing is no way. <laughs> it's like super stiff. But usually you can. Um, let me see. I mean, I can with most doors, but not with this thing. This panel adhesive together too, so it's like super strong. I'll get it. Just got to figure out how to get a good leverage point, right? I'm going to put this up against. So I got to think first here. I'm going to put this against something and then pull this side of the door and tweak it. Um, it'll happen. Not sure how yet. All right, let's try a different approach. Let's try persuading the bottom of the door and see if that part comes down as well. God, you're beating on a brand new door. It's like, that's what you got to do. You know right here is really out. It kind of flares out. It's not right. If I did that with a regular door, they would have moved an inch. I guess most of the ones I got are got a bit of thin metal on them. I, I really don't think that the, the inner panels on the original doors were 20 gauge. I think they were thinner. Maybe that's part of the problem. I don't know. Ah, let me rethink it again. See if there's anything else I can do. I'll get it. It's just, it's not going to happen the way you guys think it's going to happen.
Tell you what, man, those were death swings. I'm swinging there with everything I got. These doors are so stiff. The metal on these, like I said, when I was putting them together and, and when I've worked on them before, everything I've gotten from, from uh, Funky Green, from uh, Classic Fab, is like really, really stiff metal. And like when I was putting on the door skin pieces on the Westphalia, the repair sections, I noticed on that, I had one that was from Classic Fab, and I had another one that was from uh, the England people. You guys know. Anyway, and I tried to hammer it, and the one from uh, England bent really easily. It was really like a different steel. And then I, when I went to bend the edge over, and I did it by hand on that. I didn't have the skin zipper. So I did it by hand, and man, the one from Classic Fab, I had to really hit it with like twice as much force to bend it over. So it is a stiffer metal. As I said, I they're doing extra work to try and make it better, you know, sell good stuff. I mean, this door, man, this thing will take a hit. I'm telling you, this is way more than the original steel, way stronger. So at this point, you know, it's, this is, I have had this on another 62, the same problem. Um, or 61, same door. I had the same problem here. And one of the times I remember I cut a slit in the door right here and bent it in and then re-welded it to get it to work. It was just like when I skinned it, when I skinned it, it it pulled the door frame in or something. I don't know, it was just something weird. And I tried to do everything I could to make it line up. It was the same corner, the same bottom corner. I don't know if it was a driver's side or not, but it wasn't, you know, it was something I repaired. You know, it was all original stuff. So, who knows? I know, see, you guys that have been commenting, oh, wow, they sell the doors at... You know, BBT supplies them the silver ones. I believe that's who does that. And anybody who has the silver doors. Um, and they don't have the ones like this yet. Um, or the black ones, actually. The black ones, they don't have these. They only have the 59. And the ones from BBT, are, they think, are still in, in production. Uh, he's still working on getting stuff right on them. You know, it's, so it's been sent back a couple times. So anyway, that's why I had to get these from them because I need the ones with the recessed handle. Um, I'd have to buy all new hardware and I don't really want to change it. I want it to look original, have the original stuff on it. So that's why I had to get these. But, you know, they're, they're going to work. They're going to work once I get them straightened. Then when I get it all done, I'll beat this edge straight again. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know, that stuff's super stiff. Probably just get the hammer out, put a dolly on this side here, and just hit the other side and kind of straighten it. Or I could just put the closure on it, put all the hardware in it, and then put my slide hammer hook on there and pull it out just to get the very edge straight. Just don't want to bend the whole door. And this isn't quite where it's supposed to be. I, I'm just looking at the door. I'm not looking at how it lines up to the body, but I think the doors are about the right position on the bottom. But that corner, man, oh, no matter what I do, as hard as I can hit it, as hard as I can hit I can hit it as hard as I want, and it still doesn't quite want to go in. But see, if you see up here, this is out a little bit. This is low, or, or almost flat, and then that's out just a little more. So it's maybe a little more than a sixteenth off. It's 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 close to an eighth, but I, I won't know until I take this thing off and slide it back a little bit. So I gotta do that now. See what it looks like. I'm gonna soak that thing overnight, I think. All right, I put my man's shirt on. So I suggest you guys do the same if you're gonna do any kind of this kind of work. You better put on your man's shirt. All right. I'm thinking it's almost not terrible right now. Really, let me look at it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've been looking at it for a while. So it's kind of growing on me. <laughs> As the work gets harder. Yeah, but that's, I don't like that. I'm not going to go for that. 
can't have it wing out like that. I just don't dig that. I mean, there is a, this is already high. Um, and there's a little, there's nibs right along this edge that I need. So I need to stack a little more filler on there. Maybe I should just bring out the dog leg, maybe. I don't know. I might just fit that sucker in there. But let's see what a hammer, hammer and chisel does. Uh, All right, so here's what I've got going on right now. I've got the single cab resting at a level position. It's not stressed. Um, it's on a jack, but it's not. It's the body is not twisted this way. In fact, uh, it pretty much doesn't twist. I mean, this thing would be a great flat track car. <laughs> now that I have all the all the square tubing in the back, it's like super stiff. So. Take a look here. I've got this. I get a different camera angle in a second here. Um, and I've jacked this up. I, I cut loose all the spot welds, jacked that up in place. Um, this is not finished yet. This filler here, of course, I knew I was going to have some issues. So I didn't finish that, of course, on purpose. But I do have some filler in here, but it is, there's nibs along here because it's raw metal. So, you know, the this panel is probably misformed quite a bit as well. So that's not helping much. Let's stick it over here. So I got it to be like that. And if you can imagine when I put filler in there. That will straighten out that issue. Let's take a look at the other ones. So if I go with this height, let's see if I can get you guys in a little bit better camera angle. Really straight on. How about like that? Right there. If you see there, the gap's pretty well even. That's not a bad gap. I would say I've got a little bit of wiggle room in there. I don't like it to be too tight, especially on a Volkswagen. But if you notice right here, the gap gets pretty narrow. So I could, if I really wanted to make this right, I could do this and I could just start hammering this edge right here where my pinky is and just knock that down. I don't know if I will or not. But there is still an ear issue here, down here at the bottom of the door. I, and I think it's... Uh, once I start welding in the dog leg, you'll see it'll go right together. But if you can see, this is sticking out. Let me get you a better camera angle, like right here. You can see that. Better. How about over there? Okay, you can see that sticking out quite a bit. So I think, well, you can kind of, if I, once I weld the top part of here in, then I can twist it out. So that's the kind of thing you got to do to make stuff fit. I'm just showing you guys this because this is, you know, this is basically reality. Uh, I like to show people, you know, that nothing just goes on. You know, stuff doesn't just, you don't buy a new door and just put it on the car and it fits. Because there's really no adjustment on these doors. So you're going to have to do a lot of massaging. And it did take full force beating on this thing. To straighten it this metal is very very stiff it's stiffer than any anybody else's um and i don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing i mean it probably is for i mean this sucker won't take a door ding i'll tell you that much it is going to take a lot to door ding it versus the original metal which was a little softer you could probably door ding it quite a bit easier this is really stiff metal good and bad it's harder to work with but it's a little bit better for uh i think for strength so you know depends on what you want Okay, so I tacked it in place. Well, I have just a little bit too much gap and too tight, right? Like I said, I'm looking for not terrible. So we're heading in that direction. Anyway, I'll start. Uh, actually, on this side, I'm not going to worry about the gap here on the rubber. I guess what at all. I'll just kind of knock that back down a little bit. Start putting that back on. 
and uh, bring you guys back in in a minute. Just welding my way along here, opening and closing the door and checking the door edge, making sure we're still lined up. Still haven't welded in the bottom of the jog like yet, but we'll get to that. For plug welding, that's my settings. If you're using the Harbor Freight welder, might help you figure it out. I'm running a little bit hot because I'm plug welding and I want to make sure I penetrate between the two layers. I don't know if you've noticed, but this opened up a little bit more when I put the end on. That's a little frustrating, but I can fix it. That's what this thing's for. I need to pull that one up, but I'm gonna first I'm gonna pull this one. The top needs to come out a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it out. far but that's good I can knock it back and you guys can see that at that edge you now you can see it was behind now it's out let's hit it with a hammer do that one the gentle love tap and I'm not kidding it's not gonna take much alright right about there. Weld that up a little more. Bring it back in. Alright, let's take a look here. So, it's a little tight right here. If I raise this thing up, I'm going to have a problem. Because the shape of something isn't quite right. Probably the door. Who knows, it could be the door kind of want it to walk this way a little bit because it's really stiff metal okay but I, this overhang here I'm going to see if I can pull this out I'll let you guys check it out with me hopefully this hook works right there maybe Flip on the skin a little bit might dent it but that's alright I'm afraid of denting stuff but shouldn't do body work Always straight. Yeah, brought it out a bit. It didn't mess with this line up here too much. So that's probably in my safe ballpark there. That's in my not terrible range, I think. Now I just gotta straighten out the little mess I made there. I'll just take the hammer. Knock a few spots. This one's not reachable there, so that'll be a good little filler. Not a problem. Now this back here kind of walk downward a little bit. I don't know if I can get that to go up. Well, I can. I just do I want to. So I have to decide whether I want to do the extra work or not. Get that in frame for you guys. Bring it back in in a second. I worked out a little bit. Let's see if it looks better. All I did was just grab this and pull it upward. Now, when I go to weld it in, now well, that's going to affect it, right? I think it's an ex that's in the not terrible range. That's what I was looking at. That's fine. For, for a VW bus, I mean, these things are probably, like I said, pretty terribly neat. Now, there's a little low spot right here. Watch your ears. Little low spot right there came out, most of it. Just a little bit of filler, it won't take much at all. Along this bottom edge, probably a coat of primer 
might even take care of that, but not this little bit. This is a very small dent right here. It looks worse than it is. Okay. I'll keep welding it in. We'll see what other problems we run into. I just want to show you guys this so if you have you're putting on something, it's not just putting it on. You just work your way through the problem one thing at a time. Alright, so as I'm welding up the edge here, right here, um, it starts to walk again. Part of that's because I did so much repair to that and it's a little off shape in it. So it's tightened up right here. It's actually pulled this whole part up. So let's see if we can straighten that out a little bit. Another good thing to use is your cold chisel. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit right here with a dead blow. Let's see if I can soften it up a little bit with something. How about a piece of wood? Yeah, it's going to make some dents in it. And it didn't do anything. Just put dents in it. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little frustrating. Sometimes it just goes together. Every car is different. I knew this one was going to be tough. I'm going to tune up that corner too. Don't forget about that. Let's see if that helps. Nothing. Go down here. You gotta find a spot that wants to give, because it will. Take a look at it again. Now it's going back. It's not moving at all. Well, let me try some stuff. You just gotta not give up and just keep working at it till it does what you want it to do. You don't give up. So a little hammer and chisel action in the Groove and I got some of that out. Here's a little more. And there's a whole lot of this stuff I got. That's a little better. I gotta straighten the edge out here. Do this with any filler. <laughs> I didn't say that. Well, somebody's gonna say something. But that's all right. It's not their truck. Well, it's not terrible. No, it's, uh, it's not great. It sure did move a lot when I was putting. You know, it's. Part of it's, I know the dog legs are misshaped. I know they are. I've, I've, I've already figured that out. Part of it is a lot of work done. You got an aftermarket door. It's just a lot of, 
little things that add up to, you know, it takes a lot of 30 seconds of an inch to become an inch. It's an inch. So a lot of little things can add up. Really tight right there. I'm going to have to really play with that one. Try to get that down. It's hard to bring the arc out of that thing because it's got two pieces of metal. And I, you know, the dog leg, I have to kind of bend it out and it's not going to want to. It's not going to let me very easily. I have to beat the hell out of it. It just takes time. All right, I went straight for the other hinges. So, it's already sprung a little bit. And this side, I didn't change any metal, so hardly. So, definitely the shape's a little bit off. I'm going to shape this way. It's all right. It will work. Got to get it Got to get it to line up. It's hitting the metal here. And it's sprung. It won't. Sprung at work. So, figure it out. Again, same thing. Same old, same old. Well, it's definitely not as bad as the other side. Which is good news. But, uh, that's high. You can see the shape goes up and out right here. It's probably... Not hard to knock that one down. Yeah. That's getting there. A little chisel accent in the corner, maybe I can get it. That's the sort of thing you're looking at now. See right there? Hi. It's not bad though. This one won't take too much. The other one was a little more than I thought it would be. And uh, this hinges. Not being that good. Let's see that. Just whack it back a little bit. Knock that with a chisel. Right, I'm um, just going to show you guys real quick how bad the shells were. Again, if you didn't see earlier in the, maybe you chimed in later on the videos, um, look at the hinge section on the upper hinge, it is totally wasted. Then these were just, they just fell out of here when I was trying to hammer out the pins. All this was wasted, so this whole door, there was no saving any of these. Look at all the way along the bottom. All the way around here and look 
up here. If I repaired this um, real quick, the, uh, you know, uh, you're, you'd be a little tiny bit off on everything. And it'd be probably worse than if I just bought the new ones, even though they're not shaped totally correctly. You know, those are the type of, there's just no saving this. There's a rust hole up here too. And in here, that's just, I take, this, take the skin off of that door, and there's nothing left. This one here is the same. And this one, this is all rusted out. Completely gone. This hole is a little longer. There's the upper hinge. Totally gone. You ever fixed that part before? <laughs> There's no saving any of this stuff. Uh, there was no way other than putting on new doors. That was the only way to go. And these are 61. I think it's one to three only that have that. So you're not going to find anything in a swap meet either. Maybe you would. It would cost you about 700 bucks for a junk door that you'd have to put another thousand into or or another three hundred dollars into and probably have a thousand bucks in a in a door you did a ton of work to so it was the, the best way out was to replace them with these even though they don't fit great but they do now i mean this one's fitting okay and we'll get this one to fit good uh the dog leg once i put it in place um lines up on this one pretty good the issue with this one is up here so hmm. see that's got to get beat in and that this is original all the way along here okay i didn't do anything and it was in good shape there was no damage to it so that is a little bit it's misshaped but i'm glad like i said i'm glad these doors are available um, that they make them. I just, you know, and I knew that they were going to have some issues. I thought it was going to be more like this problem here. Um, the other one, I didn't think it was going to fit that bad, but there was a lot of work done to that side. Um, this was really rusted out behind here. And then this cab was sagging down because the frame was bad. So there's a lot of stuff probably, you know, tweaked on the frame of this thing. So, you know, Getting the, you know, the only way to do it is to just fit the door on. Even if I got a perfect door, it probably wouldn't fit. Because on this side, there was some particular issues that um, I I knew were there. You know, that I was going to have some problems with this side. So, that's why I'm having an issue most, mostly with this side. It's partly the door, but it's also partly the, um, the cab. Like I said, the cab, all there's like a giant basically a rust hole all the way from around this whole area and all the way down to the frame in that and they had jacked it up and put this temporary frame rail underneath and and over corrected it and so it, it was probably hanging down you know like six inches or something before they put that frame rail in there i don't know to get it transported over here so literally this truck was not savable it was not normally a truck that somebody would try to save but because it's a cherry picker um, and it's a bucket truck, guys who are new, it had this thing on it and it's going back on. So that's part of the reason why it could be, you know, I don't know how that affected. It might have made the cab stretched out a little bit and I've got to bring it back. And that's what I'm using the dog leg to pull it back together in the floor where all that section was missing. You know, that being splayed, if you can imagine that. With all that metal missing, it kind of doing this. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it, I'm pulling it all back together. So there's, you know, it's, you know, the, the sheet metal part of it. The frame is already right on, but the sheet metal, you know, is probably stretched out a little bit like this. So that's the issue. You know, and, I, and a lot of the stuff's handmade that I made for this side. It's not available. A lot of the metal is not available to replace some of those parts yet it's coming but it's not ready yet so anyway that's how that works at least for the 62 i think they have a 59 a lot of the doors and stuff like that are ready for the 59 but they're not ready for the 62 yet they did make one and i know that's been sent out and was rejected by the sample so it's still in the process and classic fab does make these and 
this isn't a terrible thing. You know, this is actually great to me. They're, the metal's really stiff on these. They're really strong. Um, I'm going to say they're going to be stronger than the original ones for sure. Uh, I could tweak an original door. I can't tweak these hardly at all. So they're really, really sturdy doors. So anyway, I'll keep moving. We'll take a look. I'll put the dog leg on. We'll take a look at it. All right, so here's the first part. I've got this set kind of dropped again. Got it. Hammered it in and it went down. So before I'll put it on, I'll have to get under there and jack it up, put on the bottom part. But when you hold this part in, it lines up pretty good other than the gap's a little too wider here. And I haven't welded this part in. I only welded the top. It's always, they always fight you. You gotta bend it up again. I'm gonna have to get a jack under there. Bend that up, what happened is right here in this little groove, that kind of bent down because this metal is very thin. So the whole time you're putting these on, I'm always stopping, rechecking my lines, stop and recheck the lines, stop and recheck the lines. It takes a lot of time to put on the dog leg. It's not easy. That's why a lot of times I'll just repair the ones that are there. I mean, it's 90% of the time it's easier to repair the old dog leg. Uh, but you guys saw these, there was no save in them. They were just, there was too many rust holes. There was rust holes on the top. They had rust holes on the bottom. There were rust holes on the inner panel. You know, the bottom part was wasted. You know, there's, the whole bottom part was gone. And they'd been, this one here had been skinned over with something. I don't know. So there was no saving on these ones. I mean, this whole truck, there's no saving, but we saved about what? Uh, 10, 15% of the metal. <laughs> That's it. So anyway, keep moving. All right, so I tacked it here. And if you can see, the bottom of the door doesn't line up. Um, so again, like I said, I, I got the bottom of the door where I want it to be, as far as the hinge goes. I can move it a little bit, not much. I can drop it in just a little bit. It can go, there's plenty of room there on this one. So anyway, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use my slide hammer. I'm gonna hook on the top of the dog leg and I'm gonna pull it out. So these are the types of things I'm just saying, look, there's a couple different ways you can handle this thing. You know this thing was in bad shape. If I wanted to spend a lot of time on it and I wanted to spend the next five years on my restoration and I'm always talk to you guys I'm not into that so I would do something to clamp on the sheet metal part of the front end and do a do like use a, a port of power but they have one with hooks on it on both sides that pulls and then I would weld something on the inside of this panel and I would pull it in and then I would set the dog leg and just have it lined up you know, but that takes a lot of time. You'd be surprised how much, how many hours you'll have into doing something like that. Um, I would pull the front end in and I would, you know, cause something obviously, because it didn't have metal here and stuff like that, a lot of that got splayed over time. Things like that happen. And plus, you know, the dog leg probably is a little off. Like I said, a 32nd plus a 32nd plus a 30, everything's a little bit off. And time you add it all up, it's off pretty far. So you can do it that way if you want. You know, that's on Mitch's channel. He's doing that. So, yeah, you know, they're going to be into that thing, you know, 100 grand in five years, probably, or something like that. You know, if that's where you want to go, go for it. I'm not teaching people that. So, I'm just letting you know, that's not what I do. I'm not into that. I don't want a bus. I don't want something that I have so much money and time in that I don't want to drive it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this end out. And let's take a look at it.
All right, so I'm back on this side again. Uh, kind of have to work this side. I went ahead and welded up the dog leg, got it in place, um, and had to correct some of that. It What happened as I was putting on this part, putting welding this part to here, it started to pull the dog leg upward. So, and what it did is it pulled it up quite a bit all the way across. Let's take a look here. Pulled it up all the way from about right here because I had this gap set kind of wide about there and it narrowed this up and made it closer over here. So it's kind of kind of an uphill gap. You know, I'm fine with that, actually. I could just leave it like that. I'd be fine. I don't care. But maybe some of you guys won't be. And the reason I'm going to fix this, I'm going to see if I can fix it. I don't know if I can or not. But I'm going to try and uh, do something now. I'm going to try and hammer this thing down. Because, uh, like I said, this single cap was so bad that I had basically had to stretch the dog leg on. I had to do that a little bit on the Westphalia as well. So I know part of it's the dog leg, you know. And 16th from the dog leg maybe be off and then 16th from like my metal work is off and then 16th from something for from the vehicle being splayed so now we're at you know an eighth and a half you know so it, it adds up so little things like that you know little things off so it's probably a little combination of a lot of things that are causing this so we'll see if we can get a little bit better uh yeah i, I like i said i don't care i just put it just leave it like that and be fine with it but uh, I'm going to see if I can knock this thing down and we'll see if it works. So it did improve it I'm just a little bit. I think I'm just gonna stay with it there. I mean, not saying I couldn't fix it, I could, but I don't think it's worth it to me. It's not worth me percent of the time. The other thing, if you wanted to fix it, uh, the other way it could be done is take a piece of sheet metal, put an extra piece of sheet metal on here and then just weld it to that edge. And then just like put two thicknesses here and then go further down and then go to from two to one thickness so like two thicknesses to about right here and then just do one thickness to about right here get a little bit of filler on there not much not enough to make it crack and then uh line will be pretty good but like i said i'm not worried about it at all people say oh well, you should get the lines right and it's like you know what then go buy a brand new bus that's what i have to say go buy a brand new one you want it like that this is old we'll leave it like that so it did do a little bit of damage here um no problem we're not gonna, just going to fill that we're going to go ahead and pull that out for you show you how to do that real quick we'll check that out real quick here
well it's in the not terrible range i didn't film all the finish of the filler and all that i figured that might be a little bit redundant so uh let's take a look here see if my lighting doesn't get in my way here how's that it's definitely a single cab now so anyway yeah that's where we ended up there let's take a look inside where you saw i was using that tool is called the uh what is that thing called <laughs> the uh what is it uh dang it i can't remember St stud welder the tool is called the stud welder and um that i used to pull these back out and then put a little filler in them finish them out this here i'm just going to use a little bit of um polyester glazing on that i just didn't finish it with the filler it just sands right out of that pretty quickly <coughs> really quickly it sands out so anyway i just uh i'm gonna go finger fill that with uh the other it's just a lot easier to do with that so i didn't bother with the filler so the lines of course are going to get reworked till the can they're just uh you got to use a finer paper on them. I just use a heavy paper for now just to show that they're there. And then I'll go through and just do a microfill on them. Same thing, a little bit of filler on my finger, put in the hole, and then take a finer piece of sandpaper and a sharp edge and fold it over that and sand the corners out really nice and make them look like more like factory. I'm not going to get it that perfect again. You know, like I said, this is not terrible. Okay. That's not terrible. It's not great. It's not terrible. And I'll fill this up here. Once I get all this part stripped and everything, yeah, yeah, it's not ready for that. But I did we just want to show in the same video, uh, it just kind of eliminates some of the negative comments from some of the people if I show stuff that's all done. Uh, not that I can do that in every one, but I try to, uh, if, I, if I can show something all the way through, I'll try to do it. But sometimes I can't. Let's take a look at the other side. We still got some work to do over there. This side, again, this dog leg I need to bring back up. So as I'm welding it in, sometimes it walks. You'll find out as you're crimping it, welding it, crimping it, welding it, the whole thing will start to stretch, okay? And the whole dog leg will, will move. So on the other side, it went tighter. On this side, it, it's gone looser over here. Um, down here, it's about right. So. What I need to do is, again, take the wheel off on this side like I did over there and jack up the dog leg, dog leg. And I may have to cut off my welds over there. I'm not sure. And uh, actually re-weld it in place and put more welds in it while it's under stress upward so that it will stay in place. And that will be in the next whatever, whenever I get to it in the videos. And see this ear, that's no good. It's standing up that far. That's quite a bit. That's going to take a bit of work there. I'm going to have to hammer that down. And, you know, it's going to be like probably hammer right here, put a block underneath there, and just keep beating on that thing until it does what I want it to do. You just don't give up on it. And plan on, you know, having to put a little bit of filler in your doors after you're done. You know, that's just the way it goes. It's better than having a door that's like those old ones like these with rotten hinges the whole bottom of the door is rotten you can buy this section of it uh, and kind of repair it but i know i'd be end up end up in a worse situation if i tried to fix these and then i have to fix this side this whole area i know there's rust in the top the whole bottom all the way along is rusted it's just like at what point do you decide just to replace them there's just no way you can fix something like that i mean i could fix anything but it's just a matter of it's not going to come out as good to fix this and it's not gonna especially this right here they have the recessed holes i know how to do that you know you just you put a socket on one side and then hold it in place and then use a punch in the middle and it makes that same divot you know, that's all type of thing you do to make that stuff is you use a pull and hit it with a socket i mean I hit a punch in the inside and then it'll make that recessed area all can be done but it just takes so much time. So in the time it would take for me to fix these, it was 
cheaper and easier for me to replace the doors with the other ones because they were just, you know, still have to put a skin on this. The skin would, might affect the frame. That might be what the reason why they're so stiff. So they're really, really stiff doors. So anyway, when it's all shut, looks pretty good. We got to do the roof still. Remember, we got a lot of stuff to do. So we got the roof. Uh, that's going to be fun. Nice little video for you guys. Um, we still need to do, I still need to do more caulking in the back. See the gaps over there, back corner. Still haven't done those yet for the seam sealer. And uh, a lot of stuff underneath, of course. Tons of stuff to do underneath. And then at some point, I'll paint inside here. This is all ready. And then paint back here. And maybe make it ambulatory, maybe. That'd be cool. And the inside, remember, is going gray. The outside's going orange. That's the way they were, so I want to go back to that. And it'll be kind of neat. Gray is kind of greenish. It's on here. Nose is looking good. Still got a lot of touch-ups to do here. I got all fill all of those. Fill all my spot welds. You can really see them in the primer. Because I really push on that thing. I want to make sure it's it's together with that welder. So I'd rather have a little divot to fill than have something that falls apart. Same thing I do with my welding. Got one I got to fix over here. Still got to drill that out and re-spot weld that. The spot weld came off. I knew I was having issues with that one. And it didn't stay. So anyway, that's about it, guys, for this one. Talk to you on the next one. The back's almost ready. Wow. Looks like a truck all the way around. It didn't look like that a few weeks ago, did it? Talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.